Hello, Algebra 2 students. Today we are doing what it says here, 7.2, but this corresponds to 11.2 on your math Excel. Theoretical and experimental probabilities. Okay, probability is the measure of how likely an event is to occur. Each possible result of a probability experiment or situation is an outcome. And the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. An event is an outcome or set of outcomes. Okay, so we're going to focus right here on this one because this is talking about colors and I'm in black and white, so that wouldn't really make so much sense. Um, our experiment would be rolling a number cube or just like a regular die where we have one side that's a one and two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so each possible resent of a probability each possible result of a probability experiment or situation is an outcome. So rolling a three is an outcome. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. So here's my sample space. We could roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Theoretical probability. Um, we express probability as either fractions or decimals and sometimes percentages. So on the left side, probability, you could have an event of probability of zero, which means it's impossible. There's no way it's gonna happen. On the right side, if some event has a probability of a one, that means that it has to happen. And then right in the middle, this would be a probability of 0.5, which could also be written as a fraction, one half or a percent, 50%. And we could we could have probability anywhere from zero to one. Okay, so our formula for theoretical probability is right here. The probability of an event occurring is equal to the number of favorable outcomes over the number of outcomes in the sample space. Our example. Each letter of the word probable is written on a separate card. The cards are placed face down and mixed up. What is the probability that a randomly selected card has a consonant? Okay, so probability has, no, not probability, probable has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible outcomes. And if we are trying to get a consonant, so not a vowel, there are one, two, three, four, five consonants. So out of my eight possible outcomes, five of them are favorable. The probability of picking a consonant is equal to the number of favorable outcomes, which was five, over the number of total outcomes, eight. So five eighths could be your answer as a fraction. Um, as a decimal, that would be 0 0.625. And here they expressed it as a percent, 62.5%. It's weird to finish an example and then not ask, are there any questions? Um, here we go, talking about the complement of an event. The sum of all probabilities in the sample space is 1. The complement of event E is the set of all outcomes in the sample space that are not in E. Okay, so here's our formula for that. The probability of not E is equal to 1 minus the probability of E. Again, when we do an example, it's going to make more sense. There are 25 students in study hall. The table shows the number of students who are studying a foreign language. What is the probability that a randomly selected student is not studying a foreign language? So my table, we have French. There are six students studying French. 12 studying Spanish. Three Japanese. And the example told us we have 25 students in study hall.
So, the probability of us randomly selecting a student that is not studying a foreign language would be equal to 1 minus the probability that the student is studying a foreign language. We're going to use the complement. So, 1, and there were 21 kids in that table who were studying a foreign language out of the 25 kids in study hall. So 1 minus 21 over 25 leaves us with 4 over 25, or as a percentage, 16%. There's a 16% chance that the selected student is not studying a foreign language. Ooh, geometry. Sorry, I'm having a hard time with my folding here. All right. In this example, I'm given a picture and it's a square. Okay, so nine by nine square. And inside that square, we have a triangle. And inside of the triangle, we have a rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to read it now. A figure is created by placing a rectangle inside a triangle inside a square, as shown. If a point inside the figure is chosen at random, what is the probability that the point is inside the shaded region? Okay, so this example goes on for slides and slides and slides. So I just wrote it all here. The square's area, in order to find the area of a square, we do one side of the square times the other side of the square. So the side squared, and this is nine. And even though it didn't list it as nine, we know that three plus three plus three makes that side nine. So we could do nine times nine to get the square's area of 81. My triangle here, the area for that is one half the base times the height. Okay, so one half and my base would be right here and that's nine and the height goes from um, my point here straight down at a right angle. The height is nine. So one half of nine times nine is 40.5. And next, I'm going to find this little rectangle's area by doing length times width. And 3 times 4 gives me 12. So to find the shaded area, I'm going to take the triangle, which was 40.5, and I'm going to subtract the area of the rectangle, which is 12. And that gave me 28.5 for the shaded area. To find the probability of randomly selecting a point in the shaded area, I'm going to do the shaded area divided by the total area, which we calculated back here for the square. So shaded area divided by the total area gives me this decimal. Um, as a fraction, it was 19 over 54. Okay, and that is explained slide by slide so you can look at it in the PowerPoint notes if you want more. Okay. Hmm. Now we're going to talk about experimental probability. You can estimate the probability of an event by using data or an experiment. For example, if a doctor states there is an operation that has an 80% probability of success, the 80% is an estimate of probability based on similar case histories. Each repetition of, a of an experiment is a trial. The sample space of an experiment is the set of all possible outcomes. The experimental probability of an event is the ratio of the number of times the event occurs, which is the frequency, to the number of trials.
Okay, so experimental probability. The number of times the event occurs, which is frequency, over the number of trials, which a lot of times will be represented with an N. So F over N. Frequency over the number of trials. Experimental probability is often used to estimate theoretical probability and to make predictions. Wonderful. All right. So here we have a table that shows the results of a spinner experiment. Find the experimental probability. Okay, so we have a spinner and it looks like there are four numbers on the spinner. So you can spin a one or we could spin the spinner and an arrow can land on a two or it could land on a three or it could land on a four. And in my table, it looks like we spun this spinner and we got a one six times. And we got a two 11 times. And we got three 19 times. And a four 14 times. For a total number of spins, I add this up to get 50. Okay, so we want to find the probability, the experimental probability of spinning a four. Okay, so we had a four. That happened 14 times out of our total 50. So the probability of spinning a 4 is equal to the frequency of spinning the 4, which was 14, divided by the total number of trials, which was 50. And we would reduce the fraction to make it 7 over 25. Um, as a decimal, we could write 0 0.28. Okay, let's shift over here and look at another example. The table shows the results of spinning of a spinner experiment. Find the experimental probability. We want to find the probability of spinning a number greater than two. Okay, so again, we had numbers on the spinner. We could have spun a one, two, three, or four. And we want the probability of spinning a number greater than two. So that would mean we had to spin a three or a four. The probability of spinning greater than two, okay, the number of times that happen, we spun a three 19 times, so that's where the 19 comes from, and four is greater than two, and we spun a four 14 times, so 19 plus 14 gives me 33 times that we spun a number that was greater than two over our total number of trials, 50, so as a decimal, that gives us 0.66. Is that all I wanted to cover? I think so. Great. Um, if you guys have any questions, email me. You have the 11.2 assignment to do today. Please get that done by Monday. And have fun.